Welcome to the Be It Till You See It podcast, where we talk about taking messy action, knowing that perfect is boring. I'm Leslie Logan, Pilates instructor and fitness business coach. I've trained thousands of people around the world, and the number one thing I see stopping people from achieving anything is self-doubt. My friends, action brings clarity, and it's the antidote to fear. Each week, my guests will bring bold, executable, intrinsic, and targeted steps that you can use to put yourself first and be it till you see it. It's a practice, not a perfect. Let's get started. Welcome back to the Be It Till You See It interview recap where my co-host in life, Brad, and I are going to dig into the revealing convo I had with Sue Hitzman in our last episode. If you haven't yet listened to that episode, feel free to pause this now and go back and listen to that one so that you can listen to this one and all the good things. Or listen to this one and then go listen to that one. You get to do you. Um, and that's what Sue Hitzman does. So I think she'd be very excited for you to do it the way you want to do it. <laughs> she does. She's amazing. She, she really is. Like She is the proof of like curiosity and leading it down the path. And, in, and also like how everything happens for you, um, even including the questions she was asked. So um, real quick. My loves, I want to hear from you. Like, I really want to hear from you. I want to hear your opinions. And so this podcast has been out for a year, over a year now. Oh my God, over a year now, like yeah. 14 months. And maybe you just found us and this is your first episode. Great. You can do the survey. Maybe you've listened to every single episode and this is like 100 and I don't know. Um, it's a lot. Brad's going to pipe in and tell me what it is. But anyways, if you listen to all of them, I really want to hear from you. So go to... Um, be it pod.com well, slash tell me this will be episode 124 124 that's Holy pretty insane wow. <laughs> but oh. seriously though 124 episodes and we need your help we are very interested in understanding how you're um, enjoying the pod and you know what if the segments if you like the segments if you look forward to uh the recaps or if you enjoy the interviews more or we've even thrown in a few solo episodes and what your experience was with those so go to uh, uh beitpod.com slash tell me t-e-l-l-m-e yep all right um we had an audience question and um, I really like this one. I, it was like a, it was a nice little DM I got from someone, and I can, I totally could feel her, uh, like I could, I could feel the frustration, worry, fear, wonder, <laughs> all at one time. Uh, so, what is that question, Brad? Um, so it's just basically, I have a small home studio and love teaching, but I feel like my clients move their sessions around all the time. Um, did you have this problem when you were doing that? Um, well, uh, we can answer that. Uh, how can I get them to stick to, um, the original schedule without losing them as a client, um, or without losing, uh, my time teaching them and re re rearranging them? So, uh, that's a great question. Uh, just to throw this out there, uh, we never had a home studio. Well, we do now. Yeah, we, that doesn't count. <laughs> We're not taking clients at our right, home right, studio. Right, right, right. So, of course, we have a home studio. But my point is, when we were doing this process, we didn't actually have a home studio. Yep. However, you were a you were renting from someone else. As a true um, independent contractor, you controlled your own schedule. You brought in your own clients, all those kinds of things. So, while you didn't have a home studio, you still had to deal with exactly this problem. Yeah, I did, and I was just going to say that, like, it doesn't actually matter where if you have a home studio that's small, a studio that's big, a brick and mortar, you go to people's houses. Like when you're when you have people who schedule time with you, it is inevitable that people are going to want to change the time every, every once in a while. And like, look, things come up. But I, what I'm hearing from this is a lack of boundaries. Mm. And also, here's the here's the real truth. We treat people. How, we train people how to treat us. And so what it sounds like to me, and, and this is not an offense to you, and if you're listening to this and, it's the, and what I'm about to say <laughs> hits it home for you, is a lot of times we're like, I just, I just need people to say yes. So we, especially in the beginning, we bend over backwards, like literally and do hoops and jumps of things to get clients because we think if we discount ourselves or if we're really easygoing and changing the time all, changing their schedule whenever they want to, that we get to keep clients and grow our business, but you actually don't. So you end up spending more time changing people's schedule around. So here's what I'm going to say to you, whether you have a small home studio, brick and mortar or not, if you live in the U S you need my scheduling tool. 
period. End of story. It, and if you don't live in the U.S., you need a scheduling tool. Um, and if you're still like, I don't think this is the right answer, Leslie, then come to this webinar that I'm doing. It's ProfitablePilates.com slash answer. So ProfitablePilates.com slash answer. I'm actually going to talk about how to pick a scheduling tool and all the th reasons why you think you don't need one, but you do. And this is one of those things. If you had someone who was a barrier or something that was a barrier to them being able to just text you whenever they want and change the schedule around, you would actually not feel like a bad guy. So if they're like out to lunch with their friends, they're like, oh, hey, can we go to the beach tomorrow? And they're like, oh, I have Pilates. Let me just see if I can move that. They're going to go onto your tool and they're going to go, oh, there's nothing available. I can't move it. Yeah, not or gonna, they just have to cancel altogether. Or they cancel altogether. And that's their choice. And they either are charged or it's early, but it's all them and it's not you. And so you don't feel like you have to be both the teacher and the bodyguard to the schedule. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest points is like it, it really does remove the awkward conversations. They um, can sign your waiver it, right there in the app, they've agreed to your cancellation policy, um, and as long as um, as when they go in, if if you've got a 24-hour cancellation policy and they're at 23 hours and 59 minutes, and they cancel, they will be get late charged, and you don't have to have that awkward conversation with them because the app did it for you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So there's just so many um, benefits of having an app like this. I think another one that I love uh, is that it allows uh, you to take your uh, text messages back. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and that is again, boundaries, and right? Because it allows you to go, Oh, my text messages. What a relief are my friends and family. Mm -hmm. They're not my job. They're not somebody potentially canceling on me last minute. Yeah. And yeah. so just to go back to your thing about your fear of losing a client, you don't want to keep a client who's changing their schedule all the freaking time. I used to right. have a client who would like literally, she had two, two stand appointments a week and literally one day of every week she texts me hey can i move it to one o'clock today can do you have anything else available today and i here's what i told i i had a scheduling tool she wasn't using it i had to literally go did you check the time you didn't check the time so sorry or i just didn't i literally wouldn't respond to her i wouldn't right. because you have to train them how to treat you and i am not a like what is it like big like at your like Beck and call. Beck and call. I'm yeah. not your beck and call girl. I learned that from Pretty Woman. Another great thing you can learn from that movie. <laughs> so don't take less than 100. Call me when you're through. All right. So but seriously, <laughs> like that closes your sessions. But truthfully, I don't care how small you think your business is. You absolutely deserve time away from your business and you deserve people to respect your time. And the only way they can respect your time is if there's a barrier between you and and that time, and that is a, is a tool. But think about it like this. Think about this. Could you imagine that you go uh, uh, to, let's just say we all had a parent who, um, you know, worked at a bigger company, right? And your, uh, your, your parent had a meeting scheduled with the president of the company. And then like two hours before the meeting, your parent calls up the president and says, hey, can you just move it back like an, an hour? Would, would that be cool? Like, is that all right? Like, no, fuck no. They would be mortified to do that. They, there's, and there's, you know, because when we look at it like it's like a job and the boss and all that stuff, we, we somehow have this different perception but than you being the boss, you, you being... You're the president of the company. You are the president of your company and your your clients are like, you know, is it cool if like we just kind of shift it around? I just need it to be like 12 minutes after the hour instead of like, I mean, it's so crazy that we allow people to do that. Yeah. And so, and also, by the way, I know you're like, but I need referrals. You want this person's friends? Do you really want this person's friends? <laughs> like, no, seriously. Like, do you want their friends? Because they are... They're all they, the same. They're all the same. They're all yep. like them. They're all like bouncing around like, oh, everybody does whatever thing I want. No, you don't. Like, you don't. And like, maybe their friends are different. Mm, are they? Have you ever seen that in real life? Like, are your friends different than you? <laughs> okay. So um, maybe you're like, I have this one friend. Yeah. And I bet you have boundaries with them. <laughs> yeah, and right. if you don't, put them on your scheduling tool. Okay. Go to profitapplies.com slash answer to sign up for this free webinar. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. We're actually going to do it live on August 10th. And then there will be, it will be available for the, the replay for those of you who may uh, not have been able to join us live. So, so if, if you're hearing this on August 17th, 20th, it's a whole different year. You're just binging out. Hi. Hello. You can still watch it. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Now let's talk about Sue Hitzman. 
As a fitness professional who was told there was no cure for her plantar fasciitis, uh, she decided to discover her own way to heal her pain. Uh, she's the founder and creator of The Melt Method, uh, which is uh, uh, now internationally known and has thousands of teachers it's teaching her method, by the way, uh, it, which is a simple self-discovery, uh, self-care technique that addresses the missing link to back pain, uh, to pain-free living. Uh, Sue is on a mission to help share her knowledge and empower people to learn uh, how to care for themselves better so that they too can lead active, pain-free lives as long as possible. I love it. She's super passionate about it. And the and like whether or not you even have heard the milk method, whether or not you're like this even like resonates with you, here's the deal. Your you her passion and like persistence is what's gotten her where she is, and she just followed that. And I think a lot of times we get stuck on an obstacle, which is gonna lead into my talking point. Um, and like my favorite talking point that she brought up, it's like we have to stop thinking an obstacle is a sign that you're not supposed to do the thing that you're going to do. The obstacle is, a, is, is just there to see if you're going to fight for it. You're going to keep going. Like if we gamify this, right? And you get up to a, uh, some sort of like evil thing on your game and you like, uh, you know what? Too hard. I'm not meant to play this. No way. People who play, they just like, they just keep fighting. They're like, I'm going to find a different way. I'm going to get, I got to level this up. I got to go learn this thing. I got to learn this tool. But for whatever reason, we're willing to do that on a game, whether it's a board game, whether it's a card game, you're like, oh, I'm going to collect some more cards. I don't care if you play video games or like actual physical games. Every type of game requires you to skill, like up level a skill and move forward. They all have obstacles that you have to learn how to get over. But somehow in life, we see a failure as some sort of, obstacle and we're like "Mm, that's a sign i'm not supposed to do it i don't like that makes zero sense to me i don't know how the brain doesn't like to listen live in dissonance and somehow we've managed to find a loophole so when she talked about how um you are not gonna you're not getting ahead if you don't fail right I love that because every single one of you is going to fail. In fact, the more things you try, it's a numbers game. You're going to fail more times than you succeed, period. (laughs) Like people who like Olympic athlete track runners, they lose more races than they win. Basketball players lose more games than they win. Like it is on average. And um, also too, I think if you look at another, another statistic that is like hilarious is baseball. Uh, hitting. Oh my god! Stats. I can't, it frustrates me so much. Right. You can be the crappiest baseball player. It's like it's he like has a like, point four hitting batting average, and you're like, that's four out of ten times yeah. he's hit the ball. Four yeah. out of ten, and that's good. And that's a great one. I ten. gave feedback to this one company, and I'm like, um, all these matches are like. 63 percent do you have anything that's better than a d plus like oh no that's actually really good that's like a high percentage point so <laughs> basically you're not going to move forward in your business and your life and the things you want unless you fail and Brene brown says this in her um dare to lead book she's talking about like vulnerability in the workplace and also like being more inclusive and in, in um in your efforts you're going to fuck it up Mm. In fact, the more you try to be better as a leader, the more changes you make to be more inclusive, you're going to fuck it up. And that's okay. It's about acknowledging, wow, that was a mistake. Okay, understand what I learned from it. Yeah. Make the apologies and move to the next thing. And so anyways, if you want to get ahead of where you are today, if you're like, yeah, I don't want to live at this level of my life for the rest, like like, picture the rest of your life. Yeah. You are going to have to fail. So just get used to it. That's where the analysis paralysis comes in too, because you are so worried about failing that you are just thinking through it every time and you never do any action. And like, really, I'm not saying that you just blunder your way through things. That's not, <laughs> I'm not recommending that. That's not what I'm saying here. But you, by just the nature of life, you are going to, uh, uh, you're going to run into a speed bump and it's going to derail something. And like, you know, whatever metaphor you want to mix here, you're going to drop a plate. So the way that uh, you learn is, oops, something went wrong or something almost went wrong. Well, I better be conscious of that as we're moving forward. Yeah. And like, I don't remember where we heard this, but nothing is going to be as great in your mind as as you think it's like, Oh my God, it's gonna be like this. And nothing is going to be as bad. So even if you fail, it is rarely going to be the worst case scenario. Right. So like, you know, in our minds, um, we imagine ourselves walking on stage and being this beautiful, perfect thing. And we get there and like, 
it didn't quite go the way we wanted it in our mind. It could still be uh, amazing. And, 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 but, and, and probably it was amazing. And conversely, um, if you trip falling, you know, at when you're exiting that stage in your mind, you're like, I just embarrassed myself in front of seven and a half billion people on this planet and no one's ever going to want to talk to me again and now I can't go get a job and no one's going to marry me and I and life might as well be over. And, and we take it to this incredible extreme on both ends. And in reality, probably everyone went, oh, they just tripped. Okay. Oh, you know, oh like... God. We're going off on a tangent, but I was just having coffee with someone who like talked about someone else doing something that was like a total, like would have been considered a total blender. And she goes... I am more inspired now than ever because that person is to this level of me and they did this and that gives me permission. Yeah. So basically fuck it up as many times as you can. So you learn the lesson and you get to the next level. Don't intentionally, but well, don't yes. intentionally, but don't, don't, <laughs> but don't let that stop you from moving forward. Don't let, don't let that stop you the from fuck up. Keep you from going to the next thing. And if you fail, dust yourself off, do a little reflection say, like time and then go to the next thing. Yep. It, you know, unless you died, you're, you got options. You know, we do this on so every, <laughs> uh, uh, we do this in our business every single time we hold an event, even events that we're great at. Like things that we know we did well. At the end of the event, we have this reflection time where we say, "I call it an autopsy." You probably don't <laughs> like that so much, <laughs> or a post mortem. <laughs> post mortem. That one's really funny. Oh, let's do but, the post mortem. Yeah, like, but like at the, the at the end of it, you know, we look back and we say what went amazingly well, and we celebrate our wins, and then what could have gone better, and we take notes and we leave ourselves notes for the next time. So you know, it's just part of moving forward in life in general. So anyway, I love that. That's a great talking point. What uh, did you love? Yeah, so she uh, she talked about, um, uh, she kind of casually threw this in there. She said she began to believe the myth that uh, if she was eating right and exercising right, then she would be healthy and have a pain-free life. And um, I just turned 40. Yeah, how's that going for you? Yeah, I fucking hurt myself already. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, really? Really? Sorry for that really loud f bomb right there, but seriously, I <laughs> like I hurt my back um, on the day after I yeah, I turned forty. Yeah, but and, and, and I'm, and, I'm and, laughing and about it. But in your forties defense, you actually hurt your back in your thirty in your thirties, but you I did. have been able did. to kind of like blow, like not think about it, not think about your thing, and and you know you do live a, a very healthy life. But healthy, yeah. but but I think, you know, this goes back to Jenny Schatzel's episode, which is like, stop doing things in the name of health. Like, you're just like, it's like, like, health is out there just like, we've got all these things where like, this is healthy and this is not healthy. You move intentionally often and and you've been doing it for a long time, but that doesn't mean it's per, it's like you have like a, like an armor suit around you where you'll never feel pain or have injuries. Like Right. Yeah, and I think, but I think that uh, you know, you you uh, the myth about that eating right and exercising right leads to a healthy life, it's not necessarily the case. And uh, uh, you know, I'm I feel I'm counting my blessings that I'm starting to realize this in my late 30s, early 40s. With um, uh, with regard to Sue Hitzman, she was like at her prime. Uh, she was 28, she said, when she's already been speaking around the world. She's got a, uh, a, a, a like a, a hugely popular DVD series. She's teaching people all the fitness stuff and she's telling them all this stuff. And at 28, she woke up one day and her feet hurt so much that it impacted her entire body, not just her, not just walking and dancing and stuff. She started to um, seek medical help. She started to go to the doctor and the doctor was, was telling her, you know, um, oh, it must be this. Oh, it must be that. Oh, it must be this. And then she finally had a doctor say, oh, well, I think you're just depressed, right? And she's like, yeah, no shit, I'm depressed. I can't do what I've been doing my whole life that I'm really amazing at. And now I'm like out of my own game and I'm feeling that. So that, it doesn't surprise me, right? And then she started to learn about fascia, right? And she started to really dig into how, how does it work? And she said she actually spent she just disappeared from fit, the fitness world for four years. So imagine that being like, you know, in the limelight, on TV, doing, you know, traveling around the world, all this stuff. And then poof, four years, she disappeared. Right. And when she came back, it was 
armed with this, all this knowledge and understanding of how she had begun to feel better, uh, and, uh, and how her, how changing the way she uh, treated her fascia changed the way her body responded. And she is, uh, I mean, way more knowledgeable about it than me, but she doesn't look like she's in her 50s. No. That's for darn sure. So and she's like convinced it has everything to do with that as well. And also just another another example of like your rock bottom is happening for you. Like, mm. like took her out at the top of her game. Yeah. But what top? In air quotes, because look where she's at now. That she right. wouldn't be there if she had had a, like if she had... What if this had happened to her at 45? And then she's like, got it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I feel like we, I feel like it happened exactly when it was supposed to, that so she could actually have another level. So anyways, I, I'm into it. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, and if you didn't listen to her, her pod, uh, her episode, um, she created the Melt Method based on this experience. And then she began... Uh, one thing that really impressed me too, and, and I thought this was an incredible perspective, was she said, people would come into my studio and I kept thinking like, how, how they, they keep coming back the next week. Yeah. How can I get them so that they don't have to come back the next week? And that's what she started to create this like systematic approach, which turned into the melt method. And she said it it, I, my goal was to empower my clients so that they didn't need me, that they could go do this on their own with maintenance at home. And they didn't need any crazy, like, you know, huge, like pieces of equipment or gear or any of that stuff, just a s couple of small things and some, uh, understanding of what to do. And she said her, uh, clients started to, uh, have her feet stop hurting. And then her husband, uh, she called and said, my husband has back pain. Can you help me help him? And so it became this thing. And, um, and you two talked about, you know, that fear of losing a client, like, oh, they're not coming in anymore. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. And, uh, she said, well, yeah, okay. Um, instead of me managing 50 clients a year, uh, that continued to come back. Suddenly I was managing 500 clients a year because yeah. I didn't need to see them quite as often. Making a much more massive impact. Yeah, like she was actually, having a bigger footprint. And also, like, are you helping me people maintain the status quo? Or are we helping them actually, like, level up and move forward? I've, that's what, I mean, like, you know, it's, a, it's one of the reasons why we, similarly to why we create OPC, is, like, I actually want you to be your own teacher. I do. I want you to be able to, like, Tell yourself, this is the exercise I'm choosing for myself right now. That's what we're empowering you to do every single week in those classes. And so um, I think it is so, is like like just a, like the perfect example of like an abundance mindset. Like if you're struggling with what is an abundance mindset? It's called helping people so much they don't need you anymore. Yeah. And then they send you or their friends because guess what? Everybody's going to be in pain at some point in their lives. Unfortunately, that's just the nature of how it works because we don't take care of ourselves until it's too late. You know, mm, so we're not taught to anyway. Well, that's not for sure. here. I think that other places in the world do. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, if you know those places, let me know. Maybe I'm relocating. But anyway, I will continue to relay my uh, 40s to you uh, for the yeah. next 10 years. So yeah, he buckle will. up. Yeah. And, and he's going to do it all on his own for at least six more months until <laughs> I'm there with him. But we're going to work on this back thing. Okay. Be it action items. What bold, executable, intrinsic or targeted action items can we take away from your conversation with Sue Hitzman. Um, I am going to uh, uh, read a little bit um, from what she said um, towards the end. She said, do you call somebody every once in a while and just uh, just to call them out of the blue and say, I love you, uh, you know, and here's why I love you. Uh, she said, bring positivity into your life and to try and try to find those things that elevate you. And you will start to realize that you need to take specific actions uh, to get you to that next place. Uh, but that's such a be it moment. It's such a be it moment. Uh, and she said, but, uh, well, actually I'm going to leave the butt to, to, uh, to, it, it, it ties perfectly in with what you're going to yeah. talk about. So and before we get into what I'm going to talk about, there's, um, there's a woman whose, um, name is escaping me, but she's amazing. Anyways, she talks about how, if you need positivity, go give positivity. Mm. If you need love, go give love. If you need to be seen, go see people. And it is that be it till you see it kind of a thing. And that what, what her be it actually in there is it's like, 
you just said it like it's like if you if you want to be elevated you want to realize you have these things you've got to go take specific actions and if you're unsure what actions to take take an action that's going to make you freaking good because then it's gonna be like oh i go do this like you it's called data the more actions you take that give you like that make you feel good the more confident you are in taking action so it's a simple way to do it it's all i'm saying um let me go yeah sure turn. and we can we can talk about both at the same time okay um, she said, write out, am I living in the present moment or not? And what am I presently doing for my health? And I just want to go back to like that, like, you know, eating and working out doesn't exactly mean healthy. So just be really mindful of how you define health. If you're talking like, I'm going on a juice cleanse, I'm going to say, no, I want you to like get really specific, but I want you to, I like this so much. Cause it made me think of like Nora de Kaiser we've had in our agency program. He talks about like, are you a super fan or are you a, um, or are you a star athlete? And it's like, are you judging yourself negatively and harshly around the things that you do? Or are you actually being curious and like taking a 30,000 foot view of like, what am I doing right now? And how is this affecting the life that I want to have? Cause star athletes, they, they don't go like, Oh, the catcher missed the whole like, the thing. It's like, Oh, how did I throw it? so that the catcher didn't get the ball, right? Like, what is what, what am I able to do? So it's like, are you living in the present moment or not? Yeah, I think I think also the, you know, the reason I wanted you to jump in and talk about your action item uh, is because um, the idea of texting someone that I love you uh, in the present, it, 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 it makes you be in the present moment for you to uh, uh, reflect on that uh, mm -hmm. kind of a thing. She said... Um, um, so bring positivity into your life and find those things that elevate you and you'll start to realize that you need to take specific actions to get you to the next place. But you've got to be as present as possible to make it happen. And don't let the past be the thing that limits you on what you could really do in the future. I also, you know, I want to add another question to that. Am I living in the present moment or not? And if it's no... Are you living in the past or are you living in the future? Right. Because if you're living in the past, you're just holding yourself back. And if you're living in the future, you're just causing anxiety. I think you should say that again. If you're living in the past, you're just going to, like, you're going you're, you're to be stuck in a worry, like, you're going to be held back. And then if you're living in the future, you're just causing yourself anxiety. Anxiety is, is actually, like, your, is this feeling you have over the f what could happen. <laughs> so it's like, what... When we, when we are anxious, it's because we're thinking about what could happen in a negative light and it, or even a positive light, but it's causing anxiety in the present moment, but you're not being present in the moment that you're in. So anyways, that's just my, I just, I just added a second question to that be an action item. I'm just over here, like <laughs> just over here, you know, just giving you a little bit more, doing just a, a little thing. bit more journaling for you, just a little <laughs> bit more specific journaling for you. I love that. Yeah. Well, I'm Lessa Logan. And I'm Brad Crowell. How are you going to use these tips in your life? Let us know. Tag us at the Be It Pod and tag Sue Hitzman of Melt Method. I know it will make her day to see what of her interview stuck out to you and like helped you ponder and maybe get in the present moment. Who did you text I love you to? Yeah. I don't know. That's so fun. You should tell us. <laughs> yeah. Tag Sue and tell her that you heard her pod, uh, her episode um, here and, and um, let her know. Uh, you know, your biggest takeaway from this. I think she would love that. Yeah. And until next time, be it till you see it. Bye for now. That's all I got for this episode of the Be It Till You See It podcast. One thing that would help both myself and future listeners is for you to rate the show and leave a review and follow or subscribe for free wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, make sure to introduce yourself over at the Be It Pod on Instagram. I would love to know more about you. Share this episode with whoever you think needs to hear it. Help us and others be it till you see it. Have an awesome day. Be It Till You See It is a production of As the Crows Fly Media. It's written, produced, filmed, and recorded by your host, Leslie Logan, and me, Brad Kroll. Our associate producer is Amanda Fratarelli. Kevin Perez at Desenio handles all of our audio editing. Our theme music is by Ali at Apex Production Music. And our branding by designer and artist Gianfranco Chofi. Special thanks to our designer Jaira Mandal for creating all of our visuals, which you can't see because this is a podcast, and our digital producer Jay Pedroso for editing all the video each week so you can't. 
and to Angelina Herrico for transcribing each of our episodes so you can find them on our website. And finally, to Meredith Crowell for keeping us all on point and on time.